the new season is here and i would first like to welcome all my solo mythic warriors to epical hell i know you tried really hard to escape this but this is life bro what you want to rush to mythic now it will be difficult to escape this hell but don't worry your senpai is here Hi guys, Kazuki here and in this video I am going to suggest you the best heroes to play for solo players if you want to rush to mythic this season. This list is made considering meta, popular picks, counters and potential to carry. So if you master any of those heroes, you shouldn't have a problem ranking up fast. I will also tell you some honorable mentions who couldn't make their appearance on this list for various reasons but are really good picks. Before we jump into the heart of today's video, I want to share a quick insight with you all. Seeing your comments and engagements has been incredibly uplifting and it's clear you are loving the content we are putting out. Yet there's something interesting I have noticed while a huge number of you watch our videos on a daily basis, around 64.5 haven't clicked that subscribe button. It's a simple step but it makes a world of difference. Subscribing ensures you never miss out on our special event videos which are often time sensitive and packed with benefits you won't want to miss. We have seen some of you mention missing out because you weren't notified in time and we definitely want to fix that. So if you find value in our work and haven't subscribed yet, please take a moment to do so. You will always be in the loop with everything we have got to offer. With that out of the way, let's head on to gold lanes. The first honorable mention I would like to suggest is Ixia. With high burst damage, overpowered ultimate and late game carry potential, Ixia is truly a reliable pick to rank up. Even if you are losing early games, you still have the chance in the late game with this hero. The only reason she is not on the main list is because of her lack of mobility. Your positioning have to be flawless to make this hero work, especially if the enemy has tons of heroes who can gate into the backline. The second honorable mention is Claude. High damage, mobility and the ability to get into the backline and middle down those annoying squishy mage and marksman, Claude is also a valid pick in your rush to mythic. The only problem with this hero is his difficulty level for low elo players and his dependency in his team in the early game. He is definitely not an easy hero to master. In top of that, he is also really weak in the early game. As we are done with our honorable mention, let's get into the list. The first hero you should definitely master in the gold lane is Kairi. Kairi has become a really good pick in this meta due to the amount of utility and true damage she brings to the table. Although she might struggle here and there if you play her with a bit of caution in the early game. Your opponents can kiss their victories goodbye as she will just shred through everyone like butter. Even though she does lack some range, it really won't matter once you have your full build. The semi tank build with Kairi just does wonder for all the gold laners as you won't have to be too careful with your playstyle since you will have enough survivability to survive most situations and you are going to be just so hard to kill while you melt your opponent's HP away. So guys start practicing Kairi. Next on the list we have Wan Wan. Wan Wan is one of the best hero to pick for a solo player. It has the highest carry potential with the least level of babysitting needed. Seriously, if you know how to play her, you will actually be unstoppable. You will just give her some time to learn her because she is not the easiest marksman to master and utilize. But once you do, you still will have to keep some things in mind such as even though she seems to be an OP pick, there are certainly sometimes when you shouldn't pick her. Which is if the enemy has a load of tanky heroes, whether it is Rome, jungler or even EXP. That is because transferring your ultimate from one target to another might be difficult if the enemy you activated your ultimate at didn't die. That's why you would rather want a squishy enemy lineup. Lastly, we have Nathan. 
Met in gold was forgotten for the longest time but not anymore. With the explosive high damage, life steal and carry potential, it made its place on this list. Just remember to play safe since he lacks mobility. Remember to make this item if you wanna play offensive, otherwise you can build steel leg plates if you encounter some strong early game physical hero. Make sure to play safe in the early game as you are not the strongest in the early game since his power starts spiking in the mid to late game. You can use his ultimate like this. For a quick retreat, since your ultimate is your only source of mobility, so use it wisely. Next, we have mid lane. Let's get into honorable mention. First, we have Lilia. Lilia is a wonderful and game changing mage that everyone should play. Her ability to clear out areas, keep her distance, survive, and do a lot of damage is just amazing. However, she has some shortcomings. First of all, she lacks any kind of hard CC for a mage. Her skills are a bit slow and if you are a decent player, you know that you have to target her. So unfortunately, she won't be making it into the normal list, but she still is a very good hero that you can win matches with. Next honorable mention, we have Aurora. With the whooping 78.89% ban rate, it's already hard enough to pick her. But if you do, it is one of the best, if not the best match right now in this meta. After the revamp, all of her skills got significantly upgraded. Filled with explosive damage and crowd control abilities along with an extremely helpful passive which can put Nana into shame. She is here to carry your solo journey. The only problem is, she is always banned, so good luck picking her. First, we have Sicilian. Sicilian is the hero you wanna pick to carry those orangutans in your team. He is extremely good at carrying your team from losing position. He is little weak in the early game, but heaven forbid for your enemy if you ever reach a point where the game lasts for 20 plus minutes. At that point, no magic resistance item would be available to save you. You will just have to maintain a good position since he lacks mobility. Here's a tip to manage your mana in the early game. Don't use your first skill more than twice before letting it reset. That's how you can farm your stacks way faster and you won't have to recall much often. Always make magic necklace, elegant gems or at least power crystal for more mana consumption. Next we have Exana. The queen of necro keep has become really popular in this meta especially after the huge buff she received. Her chain crowd control including no cup and taunt which will make you question what exactly happened to you while quietly you waiting for your respawn. Your enemies will have to be extremely careful since the animation of her skills has gotten much faster than before. She also has a really fast wave clearing speed, maybe faster than any other mage. So use it to your advantage and fast rotation. Make fleeting time an enchanted talisman with her and you will have your own bodyguard within a cooldown of seconds. And finally, at last, we have Nana. She was already really annoying to deal with, but after her soft revamp, she become a demon herself. Like look at this, how is that even legal? That's the reason she has a ban rate of a whooping 68.03%. She has high damage, high CC and even an inbuilt immortality, what else you could ask for to rank up. And not only that, most of the time your enemy won't even bother killing her because of passive. Like imagine being this cute yet this demonic at the same time. She also a mage who is really strong from the early game, so you don't have to worry about your being bad, you can just carry from the get-go. Moving on to the role that everybody wants to play but not everyone can play. <laughs> the jungler slash hyper role. Two honorary junglers I would like to mention are Hanzo and Joy. 
Hanzo is one of the deadliest heroes in the correct hand. If you have proper map awareness, it's almost impossible to kill him. And if you go for a tank build on him, may God have mercy on your enemy team's soul as he will be so difficult to kill. Even if you build him tanky, his damage won't go down by much as he will be dealing HP based damage. Just like her, we have another assassin, Joy. Joy's skill set is designed for players who enjoy a fast paced, aggressive playstyle. She can swiftly close gaps between her and her enemies, unleash a flurry of attacks, and retreat before they can make a counter attack. This hit and run tactic makes her particularly effective against squishy targets such as marksmen and mages, whom she can often eliminate before they have a chance to respond. Both of these assassins require a sheer amount of practice and dedication. So hop into practice mode and grind your skills. The first hero I would like to suggest is Fredrin. Yes, you heard me. In solo queue, no one will be there to tank for you. So the best hero for you to hyper will be Daddy Fredrin. His ability to sustain in prolonged fights while dishing out considerable damage makes him a formidable force on the battlefield. Yeah, boy. A good Fredrin user who knows what he is doing with skill 1 and ultimate is almost impossible to lose a red key battle. He is also fast for a tank, allowing him to move around the map quickly to help in fights or take objectives. If you want to see how I dominated with Daddy Fredrin, then you can check this video out. The next hero I have for you is our Dino Boy, Parrot. <laughs> Parrot is a powerhouse in the jungle role because of his ability to quickly take down jungles and control the battlefield. When big, he sure gives huge damage, so yes, size does matter for this hero. So make sure you keep your eye on this deck to deal maximum output. A second skill can not only disturb any hero casting skill such as Tigrils or Franco's ultimate but can also be used to disengage a team fight so be wise and don't be shy to use this skill. Moreover, the first skill's damage and slow effect is just a chef kiss. And how can we forget about the revamped ultimate? He simply is a powerhouse as of now. And the final jungler for my solo queue warriors would be Giniver. What kind of video am I making if I'm not going to suggest Giniver? I know the latest nerf did lower her second skill range by a bit, but the concentrated energy buff definitely makes up for it. Even though the range is a little less, she still can move a lot of distance due to her second skill, and she is a very good jungler as it is a better to ambush people from the jungle. And her skills do deal a lot of damage. So guys, don't think much if you see her open. Just grab her and destroy your enemy team. Moving on, we have EXP lane. Let's get into honorable mention. The first hero we have is our yo-yo girl, CC. At first glance, the recent addition to ML didn't really make an impact. But with proper itemization, she not only deals continuous damage but also becomes unkillable. Prioritize attack items like Vorex and Hunter Strike. The rest I suggest is going tanky such as Brute Force Breastplate and Oracle. But because of her 50% ban rate, she couldn't make in the main list. The second honorary hero I would like to suggest is Yuzon. I mean it's Yuzon, the scary big black dragon that always dominates lane and take his foes down with ease. He has everything from sustain to team wiping capabilities. He honestly does deserve to be on the list, but guys, the other heroes I think are just plain better for the current meta. The first hero for our Giga Chads is Lancelot's brother Arlot. What? Just kidding, but with the amount of dashes he does, he sure can make Lancelot <laughs> cry. Arlot's durability sure is impressive, but Arlot with the damage build is simply overpowered. With the amount of lifesteal he has, he simply becomes an unkillable dash machine. I don't know about you, but I have taken many first blood with him. However, mastering our lord requires a good understanding of his skill mechanics, timing and good itemization. In summary, Arlot is a great addition to your solo queue journey, offering a blend of control, survivability and damage. He shines the most when your team have CC heroes. 
The next hero we have is our annoying hooker, Ruby. Ruby is truly a monster. She might look cute, but she's a monster. She's just crazy with the amount of CC and mobility she has. Almost all EXP laners have difficulty keeping up with good Ruby. And let's not forget, she's the easiest hero to hook with. You don't even need to aim like Franco and Mencita. She will just sweep everything in front of her, and her spell vamp is just too much compared to any other heroes. If you don't mess up your position and be somewhere you are not supposed to be, I honestly don't see Ruby dying in almost any situation. So pick this scythe wielding peace killing hooker wherever you can. And lastly for our Giga Chats, we have Terizla. A formidable fighter in the battlefield known for his exceptional durability, area of effect damage capabilities and unique ability to reduce damage taken, making him a tanky presence on the battlefield. Just like YZ, Terizla shares the same effects except he has one of the best crowd control ultimate. And with a beautiful flicker, he can turn tides of the game. So hope on to practice more and master this monster to complete your solo queue journey. And at last, we have Rome. A role not everyone wants to play, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. When playing solo queue, you have to adapt every role possible. So the first honorary hero I have for you is Lolita. The small elf with a big hammer, a hero with great CC, a hard counter to all the heroes who shoots projectiles. Of course, we are going to give her a mention. She's one of the most fun heroes to play as, and you should pick her whenever you see an annoying marksman. She could be on the list, but I just think that other tanks are better. The other honorable hero is Diggy. Yup, the nightmare of every CC heroes out there. Just like Tigreal, it is also on the ban list. Not only it can be immune from CCs, but can also burst, provide reasons, shields, and disturb the enemy. So if given a chance, don't miss this hero. Now the first hero I have for you is Mathilda Airlines. The Swift Plume is a highly mobile support known for her agility, support capabilities, and burst damage. Timing and precision with Matilda's skills are vital. Use a second skill to shield allies during engagements or to escape. Use your ultimate wisely either to initiate a fight or poke enemy and scare. With the right strategy and team coordination, Matilda can control the pace of the game, making her a valuable asset in any team composition. The next Rome hero we have for you is Tigreal. Daddy Tigreal has to be here. I know he has a kind of become a bit hard to pick, but he has to be here. He's honestly the easiest tank to perform mind-blowing sets with. He has everything in his kit to be perfect tank, and all his CC skills are just so good. And his ultimate is just classic. Just one good Tigreal ultimate along with the team can change the pace of the game. So whenever you get the chance, don't miss out and pick him. And lastly, we have Minotaur. Yes, this bull is crazy and out of hands as of now. His ban rate peaks for himself. He is like Lolita and Rafaela combined. Yes, you heard me. The amount of CC he can dish out is just so annoying and the healing he can provide to his team is valuable as well. If you want to learn more on Rome, then you can watch this video out as we made a detailed guide when playing as a Rome. So use these heroes to climb your rank before everyone else and tell me if your main hero made into the list. Comment down your current rank and the time it will take you to reach Immortal. So that will be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Keep supporting Kazuki Official.